PET and SPECT are the two major molecular imaging modalities used in nuclear medicine. My name is Pauline, I'm a Belgian nuclear medicine resident, and in this short video, I will explain the key differences between the two techniques. Before we start, you have to know that PET and SPECT are different from other imaging modalities such as X-ray, CT or MRI, in the sense that PET and SPECT visualize organ function, whereas the others assess the anatomy. This is one of the main reasons why diagnosing and staging cancer is such a big part of a nuclear medicine physician's job. PET and SPECT scans may detect biochemical changes in an organ that can identify cancer lesions before anatomical changes can be seen with CT or MRI. PET scans can detect cancer on average six months earlier than a CT scan. But what are PET and SPECT scans exactly? PET stands for positron emission tomography and uses positron emitting radioisotopes. The most commonly used radioisotope is fluorine 18. SPECT, on the other hand, stands for single photon emission tomography and uses gamma emitting radioisotopes. The most commonly used radioisotope is technetium. These isotopes are then incorporated either into compounds normally used by the body, such as glucose, water, or ammonia, or into molecules that bind to receptors. For example, when fluorine 18 is prepared, it is attached to a specific form of glucose. This forms fluorodioxyglucose. Fluorodioxyglucose is a radio-labeled pharmaceutical, or in short, a radiopharmaceutical. When given to a patient, the body assumes that it is glucose. The FDG is sent to metabolically active areas in our body, such as the heart, the brain, but also cancer cells. In fact, the degree of aggressiveness for most cancers is roughly paralleled by their rate of glucose uptake. A quick summary of what we've discussed so far. A radiopharmaceutical consists of a radioactive isotope, which creates the image, and a tracer which determines where the signal accumulates to form the image. So radiopharmaceuticals function like a GPS tag, allowing doctors to track not only where in the body the atom goes, but also how it behaves. Both SPECT and PET radiopharmaceuticals decay by emitting gamma rays, which are picked up by a special camera. But they both do it in a different way. Fluorine 18 produces small particles called positrons. When a positron encounters an electron, which happens very quickly in the body, both particles vanish in a burst of energy. This energy comes in the form of two gamma rays that travel in opposite directions and can be detected by the PET scanner. Only gamma rays that interact at the same time with a pair of detectors are recorded. The trajectories trace back to the point of annihilation, allowing a computer to form an image. Technetium, on the other hand, produces only a single photon of radiation. This photon moves out of the body and is detected by the camera. Combining thousands of these photons ultimately result in image creation. Here is another picture to illustrate this. Fluorine 18 produces positrons. Positrons encounter electrons and vanish. They release two gamma rays that are detected by the camera. Technetium produces a single photon of radiation that is also detected by the camera to form an image. A typical PET scanner incorporates hundreds of detectors in the form of rings around the patient. SPECT scans, on the other hand, typically have two large rectangular detectors that rotate around the patient. SPECT and PET scans are most often combined with CT scans to provide both anatomical and metabolic information. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it and you want to see more of my educational videos, please consider subscribing to my channel.